The Young Bucks are down bad. They had to completely change their gimmick. Get, get this bum out of here, will you? Just get this bum out of here already, huh? And ring gear, and every step they take, every move they make, feels like a reaction to something CM Punk said or did over a year ago. AEW Revolution was a great send-off for Sting. The Young Bucks were fantastic in their roles as heel authority figures, and I think Revolution will do around 200,000 buys on pay-per-view. But those are nostalgia buys, and AEW will no longer have the crutch of Sting's retirement to sell tickets. Not that they did a good job selling tickets during his actual retirement tour. God, how do you fumble the bag with Sting's retirement? Tell Moving forward, AEW lies. will be in no man's land and has very shaky ground to stand on, let alone build around. Let's talk about how the Young Bucks have gone into crazy town with a washed gimmick that will continue to make them look like the Timu.com Titan Towers. Uh the Young Bucks showed out at AEW Revolution, but the match featured more Easter eggs designed to stick it to CM Punk? CM Punk infamously brawled his way in and out of AEW through the brawl out and the brawl in. His final punches thrown backstage were over Jack Perry's use of real glass, a skirmish which made tiny Tony Khan feel for his little wife. Fast forward to March 2024, Jack Perry is still MIA on AEW TV. In fact, they're still playing off this angle with Jack Perry in the middle of nowhere in New Japan Pro Wrestling where nobody is watching. Suck on that! Pop quiz, what was the last match Jack Perry had in New Japan Pro Wrestling? Tell me now, who did he beat? Who did he beat? That's what I thought. AEW continues to beat itself by incorporating real glass into its fake matches, including a death-defying spot where Darby Allen dove through real glass from a 20-foot ladder. Darby's back was cut to shit and bleeding worse than Bix's acne scars. But not only did Darby suffer from this incident, a 75-year-old Ric Flair caught strays and was bloody. Sting went through some real glass at age 64, all because AEW just had to prove that they're the real glass company. And a veteran like CM Punk, who was just doing right by wrestler health, isn't going to tell them what to do. Yeah, you're not the boss of AEW anymore, Boomer Phil. And they're proving that by trying to give each other hepatitis C. It, it makes no damn sense. Compels me though. That they are the collateral damage of the Young Bucks being dangerously petty, with the EVPs condoning the wrestlers to play with sharp objects in order to prove a point. Get it? Sharp? Point? <laughs> How is CM Punk winning this divorce after tearing up his triceps a second time? If AEW really wants to teach CM Punk a lesson, they shouldn't be doing it by putting motherfuckers in danger with real glass, if you'll pardon my Swahili. They'll need to be telling better stories and focusing on their stars of the future, who can fill the void left by CM Punk. The day AEW feels it no longer needs to plant CM Punk Easter eggs all over its product is the day AEW can truly move on from a nightmare that still haunts them. The Young Bucks have decided to capitalize on these events by turning heel. Which means now that CM Punk has left their company and they have complete control of the narrative on AEW TV, they want to use that narrative to make themselves the bad guy, thereby baby-facing CM Punk and even Cody Rhodes. Look, it's one thing when Vince McMahon became a heel coming off the Montreal Screwjob. He had to. Everybody hated Vince after the Montreal Screwjob. Steve Austin was a ready-made, anti-authority babyface, and WWE ran with that angle all the way to the bank. But the Young Bucks exist in a more divisive pro wrestling culture than ever before. So people who love WWE all of a sudden love CM Punk, while AEW Supermarks back the Young Bucks. Instead of playing to those who like them, the Young Bucks want to recreate the dated heel authority archetype, one that WWE is already doing better than them through the heel turn of The Rock. Again, one that works because it came out of necessity immediately due to fan backlash. The heel turns of The Rock and Vince McMahon felt natural. They came right after fan backlash and only the smallest of tweaks made them exceptional villains. Instead of being Vince McMahon, he was Mr. McMahon. Instead of being The Rock, he was, well, still The Rock, just with $5,000 shirts and fresh bars about crack. Now go home and smoke some more crack. The Young Bucks' heel turn feels forced. They're Matthew and Nicholas Jackson now. They're leaning into being EVPs and wearing pantsuits to the ring. 
It's silly and just more inside baseball for AEW's gatekeeping fan base to have a laugh to themselves during a circle jerk, if you'll pardon my Swahili. I get what they're trying to do, but this gimmick came about seven months too late. They spent all that time ignoring the CM Punk situation, and now that it seems like they're embracing their perception as heels, everybody's moved on and AEW's arenas have cleared out. Tell me when I'm telling Matthew lies. and Nicholas aren't hateable heels unless they're wrestling Sting in his retirement match. They'll continue to get heat through the Tag Team Championship Tournament, but I'm sorry, the Tag Team Division is no place for this type of heel authority gimmick. If you're watching this, you're a wrestling fan. And my favorite type of wrestling fan, by the way, because you subscribe to this channel, thank you very much. Like me, you enjoy wrestling content, like documentaries and behind the scenes stories, like the Pipe Bomb Problem, RCM Punk documentary, which was named the greatest wrestling documentary of all time by Alfred Kanoa. And now you can get even more TV wrestling content with our affiliate, Friendly TV. Friendly TV is the most affordable streaming service in America, starting at only $6.99 per month, billed annually. And in addition to over 40 top-rated live TV networks, you can watch Dark Side of the Ring, which just premiered season five, Biography, WWE Legends, and WWE Rivals. I signed up for the seven day free trial of Friendly, and I'm keeping it because it has all my favorite wrestling content all in one place, all for the most affordable price in these United States. Right now, you can try Friendly for free by clicking the link in the description or scanning the QR code. If you're an avid wrestling fan who enjoys docu-series about this art, Friendly is your friend, and so am I. If the Young Bucks really want to be that effective as heels and salvage these characters, they'll need to side with a top heel in the AEW world title picture, one that actually gets heat. One that comes few and far between in AEW. A top heel like Hangman Adam Page. Think about that. The Young Bucks use and abuse their authority to make Hangman Adam Page their AEW World Champion. Those are the type of heels that can propel AEW out of its funk as they continue to gain momentum through Sting's retirement and the imminent debut of Mercedes Monet. And Okada, so what? Led by AEW Press Secretary Dave Meltzer, the AEW Supermarks have anointed Will Ospreay as the top star of the future. Because Tony Khan will always kowtow to Meltzer and whom Meltzer's favorite wrestlers are. Like the problem him. with Will is he is not the future of AEW. Whether AEW knows it or not, they will quickly find out that building around Ospreay is tantamount to building around a house of cards. Will Ospreay is a human game of Jenga. And like Kenny Omega, every time he builds ahead of steam at this stage in his career, it'll all come crashing down because of the dangerous style he works. The type of style that makes Dave Meltzer wet. He did get wet watching Will Ospreay this past Sunday, didn't he? I mean, that's all that really matters. I hope I'm wrong about Will Ospreay's health moving forward, but these comments are just based on what we already know about Will Ospreay now and just how much he's willing to kill himself for imaginary star ratings. Hell, he was questionable for a match against Kyle Fletcher going into Dynamite due to a back injury one match in, when that could have been way worse than a back injury because he landed on his head watching a brain buster on a turnbuckle. AEW has a Will Ospreay problem, and whether or not it haunts them, they already have a ready-made babyface of the future. Somebody who would be a natural fit for a heel hangman Adam Page in the Young Bucks. And that's Swerve Strickland. Skirt, skirt. Swerve, swerve. Swerve and Hangman are already currently in a blood feud where Hangman's goal is that he's willing to do anything, and I mean it, Nick, think, nah, to keep Swerve from winning an AEW world title. Swerve and Hangman feuding over the AEW world title with the Young Bucks serving as Hangman's goons is the exact storyline that will play into the heat-seeking heels that the Young Bucks are pretending to be. The heel elite will be the corporation to Stone Cold Swerve Austin. The insulated all elite incels want Will Ospreay to be the guy because of the way he wrestles and his technique. And that's all fine and good. That should play into what makes a top star. But I don't give a f about Will Ospreay. There are plenty of people in AEW with technique. We're splitting hairs here. What the f is your story? Who are you beyond a flip a dive and a back injury? Until we figure that out, Swerve and Hangman have the perfect story that'll make AEW a better television show. Because that's what AEW is at the end of the day. A television show, not a Wrestling Observer vanity project. You can't make a big baby face star without a hot heel. 
If you watched AEW Revolution, you'll notice only five wrestlers were booed as heels. Christian Cage, Roderick Strong, kind of, Hangman Adam Page, and the Young Bucks. For those of you counting at home, that's only five effective heels out of the 29 wrestlers who appeared on this show because AEW can't tell a story for sh if you'll pardon my Swahili. AEW needs believable heels for Swerve Strickland, not Will Ospreay, to become its biggest star, thereby taking AEW out of its funk for good. Check out this video about how to fix AEW and subscribe. Should AEW's next babyface champion be Swerve or Ospreay? Tell me in the comments!